I've talked about plenty of giant robots on this series, be they sapient organisms or massive man-made military machines. This time, however, I want to slow down a bit. Today, we're going to a little island getaway to meet a wise old sage named Toby. Toby is a Class C-53 tram locomotive of the Great Eastern Railway. It's heavily implied that he's specifically number 127, built in 1914 at Stratford Works. These small engines were designed by James Holden for use on the Wisbeach and Upwell Tramway in East Anglia, though they were also common sites in Yarmouth, Ipswich, and elsewhere. The rather unique appearance of these engines stemmed from the nature of the line as a rural carrier of mostly agricultural goods, and it ran along roadways for much of its route. The Board of Trade mandated that any engine going along public roads be equipped with a bell, cow catchers, side plates covering the wheels, and a governor to limit its speed. Sadly, no examples of the class were ever preserved. But of course, they live on through Toby. And if you don't know the story from there, I'm going to direct you to this impeccable video essay by the Unlucky Tug. Or you could just watch Classic Thomas. Now I've wanted to have a fleet of Northwestern Railway locomotives in model form, based on the real-life locomotive counterparts, for years. There's just one slight issue. I do not like 00 scale. It's just too big for the gauge of track that it's running on. And frankly, I'd like to display these models alongside my HO collection. You see this image right here? This physically pains me. So you know what I said? I said fine. I'll do it myself. I started off by looking for a suitable chassis for my Toby. And believe it or not, I actually sourced it from a Bachman Toby. It had six wheels that all had power pickups, two of its axles were driven. It seemed like a foolproof idea. The body, meanwhile, is a 3D print from Shapeways, specifically this one by Recreation 21. Unfortunately, it was only available in natural versatile plastic, rather than my preferred smooth, fine detail plastic, which basically means that it would have a much rougher finish. When I got it in person, though, it was a lot better than I'd anticipated. The finish of the plastic made for a surprisingly decent wood grain. There was just one little hiccup. Fulveration! I had quite literally overestimated the size. Hindsight is 2020. But hey, I'd already shilled out over a hundred bucks for both of these combined, so I was gonna make it work. I set to work disassembling the chassis, which I'd already intended to do to remove the eye mechanism, seeing as it would have only created extra work for the motor. I disconnected the motor from its leads, grabbed a Dremel with a cutoff wheel, and went to town on the thing. Removing the half that housed the gears for the eye mechanism was easy, but getting the body to sit how I wanted required some delicate work around the ends. I even shaved a bit off of the inside of the body too. I'll admit it's a hackneyed way of getting the body to fit, but at the end of the day, it worked, and I was happy with the result. The next step from there was installing a DCC decoder. DCC stands for Digital Command Control, which basically uses a small computer inside each locomotive to allow it to move independently of the others, without having to split the layout into multiple power districts. The specific decoder I ordered was a Digitrax DH126P. I measured how long I needed each of the wires to be, cut them to size, and then soldered them to their respective places. And just like that, I had an operational chassis for Toby. With that done, it was onto the body. After a wash to remove any residue from the printing process, I gave it a coat of Tamiya Light Grey Surface Primer, as is par for the course in this series. It took me a while to figure out what colors I wanted to use to replicate Toby's look in the books. His side plates were easy enough. I decided that Mission Model's MMP-112 Bright Blue made for a perfect balance between the NWR Blue from the books and the Cerulean used in the TV series, and that was the first color to go on. It took me a little longer to decide on a brown that looked chocolatey enough to match the illustrations, and even longer to decide on a cream color for the trim. For the former, I ended up going with Mission Models MMP-012 Rotbraun RAL-8017. <laughs> Try saying that three times fast. As for the trim, I mixed Reaper Master Series 9123 Khaki Highlight, and 9030 leather brown in a jar until I got something that looked about right, and used a toothpick to apply it. 
In hindsight, it probably would have come out better if I'd painted the trim color first, masked it off, and then applied the brown. But hey, I've done worse jobs lining my engines. The buffer beams were painted using Tamiya XF7 Flat Red, a nice bright hue that'll look perfect later on when I make someone else. The final touch of paint was making the buffers and roof black, for which I used Vallejo NATO Black. Now if you're an Avid model railroader, you may have noticed the lack of traditional tension hook couplers or a D-loop to attach them to. This is because I hate these godforsaken things. Instead, I opted for double-o scale screw link couplings by Hornby. I cut them so that they wouldn't stick out awkwardly and attached them to the body with cyanoacrylate adhesive. After the paint dried, I protected it with a semi-gloss lacquer top coat. And that's how we sat for a few weeks. At this point, I was waiting on two more shipments that I needed to finish him. One of these was a custom decal sheet that I made with special NWR lettering, based on a modified Rockwell typeface. I like to think that in the universe of the books, the TV series used the Rockwell typeface because it's what the real-life NWR used. The other thing I was waiting on were the faces, which I designed myself in Blender. Took a while to learn, but man, was it worth it! I uploaded the file to Shapeways, and the print was a success. Around the time that I was working on the faces, I realized something. There's just something... incorrect about making a Toby but having no Henrietta to go with him. Fortunately, Recreation 21 also offers an HO version of Henrietta's basis. So, I went ahead and bought that along with the faces. A few weeks later, both packages arrived. The decals were stunning, and I knew that it was a smart decision getting them professionally printed. The faces came out great too, though I wish I'd made them a little deeper and more defined. But hey, I was proud of myself. I decided that the gray primer was a suitable shade for the faces, so they were halfway done already. Painted the eyes using a white Gundam marker, being very careful not to allow it to pool in the sockets. Dotted them with black, painted the teeth on a couple, and voila! Toby had gone from a prop to a character. Henrietta, of course, took a little more. Before anything else, I needed wheels for her. I ended up sourcing them from a Bachmann Vanderbilt tender, but I needed to both shorten the axle nubs, which I did with a pair of rail cutters, and carve out the axle boxes. Fortunately, I'd just gotten a Micromark truck tuner, and after an hour or so, Henrietta was rolling. Painting the body, unfortunately, was going to be a little tricky. Most of the prints offered by Recreation 21, if not all of them, are all one piece, even on models that would benefit from being divided into multiple parts. Case in point, Henrietta's balconies. These things weren't going to be the easiest to mask off, and what I ultimately chose to do was just airbrush the orange and brush on all the black. The next thing she needed was glass in her windows, which I achieved, as I do on my structures, with Deluxe Materials Glue and Glaze. I had also applied this to Toby, but I took it off after I decided that I didn't want his to have a frosted appearance, and so I would apply that after the final layer of top coat. As you can expect, the plastic 3D print was considerably lighter than the die-cast chassis with the can motor. If I wanted Henrietta to perform decently on the rails, then I would need to give her some additional mass. I accomplished this with a flexible weight intended for pine car derby cars, so I could easily cut it to whatever shape I needed. The NMRA recommended practice RP 20.1 states that HO scale rolling stock should weigh half an ounce per inch of length plus one ounce. Henrietta is just under three and a half inches long, which translates to 2.75 ounces. The decals were applied just like any water slide transfer. Soak it in water for a few seconds, apply a dab of decal liquid to the surface, place the decal, soak up the excess, and done! I diverged a bit from almost every depiction of Toby, official or otherwise, by having him wear the initials of the Northwestern Railway on his side plates. It's an idea I toyed around with years ago, although nowadays I don't think every character works with NWR lettering on their livery. With Toby though, it just feels right. The real C-53s had their operator's initials on their side plates, so this just feels like the natural evolution of that. After the decals came a touch of weathering, I used a flat brush to streak down some soot-colored powder on the sides and his roof. I didn't want to get too crazy with it, though. Maybe in the future I'll add some quarry dust or something to make it look like he's really been earning his keep. Once all of this was done, at long last, I applied the final layer of top coat, and Toby and Henrietta were finished.
I for one am glad that I finally got around to making these two, and I know it's only going to grow from here. I've already started work on my next engine. Feel free to leave your guesses of who it is in the comments. And if you want to use these faces on your own HO or 00 Toby, the link to my Sheepways is in the description. Next time we'll be returning to familiar territory on the world of Cybertron. But I shouldn't say any more, or I shall spoil the next story.